Hey guys, welcome back to the ranch. Got a little bit of audio issue in this video. Just recording straightly through the camera and stuff through the lapel. So, hope it still turns out good. So today we're going to look at my Renai tankless water heater. From time to time, I get a code 12, error code. Can't um, distinguish if it's got a flame or not, which means it's time to clean it. So, you'll need a few simple tools for that. One is a screwdriver and an extra long screwdriver. And I'll show you how we're going to take this apart um, to get it cleaned. So, first things first, you want to disconnect it from the power and shut off your gas to it. And you can't see my gas valve because it's out of the picture just believe me then we got to remove these two side clips here which kind of just go off like that on both sides now my one on the right doesn't really hold because i got my drain hose here place those to the side and now you'll be able to see there is one two three four uh, Phillips head screws on my model here which we will zip out and that will allow us to take off the front panel Uh, do yourself a favor, get your cell phone, take some pictures, how it looks when it's open, just in case, so that you remember where what screw goes. Um, so we're going to have to remove this guy here, and ultimately we're trying to get this whole part out, because um, we want to get, these are our flame spark thingies here and we're trying to get this all out so we can get everything clean that's up behind here in order to do that as I said this needs to come out we're gonna need to disconnect some wires and stuff and we just want to be sure that we remember where exactly to put them now you could say oh why don't I just zip off these four screws here and pull this out you can do that if you want to replace these or if you just got the gasket that goes behind here because there is a gasket and uh, there's a big potential that this gasket is going to break if you take it out. Since I don't want to replace this gasket, I'm going to opt for uh, pulling everything out so that this gasket can stay uh, intact. So let's start by... Um, removing this screw so we can pull this control panel off just let it kind of lie on the side right there so I think I was out of frame before uh, these are up here they just pull straight down and this guy here also this is over like this but this wire simply pulls straight out and then you can move this cap along out of the side there we go so I'm going to start um, by removing these here it's just so we can move those wires then to the side to the side these are then not impeding us we are going to have to remove the 
this guy over here. And it'll just nicely sit there on that side. Alright, now comes the fun part, remembering which which screws we want to take actually off. Get this plate off, and uh, if I remember correctly, it's easier. Let's give it a zip. See what happens. Because behind this black one is another cork gasket, <clears throat> which you don't want to disturb if you don't have it on hand. Is already coming off here, this part. So. Okay. And now, um, take a note of which ones are plugged in where. They're pretty much not gonna reach any other way. Uh, but we're gonna have to unplug it and be good. And remove that. So, you have your red, your blue, your yellow, and your orange. And they should just slide out. This is also going to be a part of what we're going to want to clean are all these nozzles here. We're going to want to blow them out. Now in an ideal world, if you would remove this part, because you can see, if you look here in between, if I can get it to focus, I'll show you that on the bench afterwards, the cork gasket, then you could actually blow through from the back. We're not going to want to do that. Now, here comes the fun thing. Let me get you guys off for a second and get you a little closer with a flashlight. Now, in order to take this, this the burner, whatever area in here, but if you look back here, you see there's one screw back there. If you go to the other hole, there's another screw back there. And that's pretty far back. So your normal run-of-the-mill home screwdriver won't fit. You're going to need an extra long one. But you need that in order to be able to pull this whole assembly out. So that's just a warning to you. You do need an extra long screwdriver to reach back there. Now, don't make fun of me. The only extra long screwdriver I have is an... As a 22 inch screwdriver. So, but if we put it back in here to the screw to there, you'll see you need about that much. So, you'll need uh, probably about an 8 inch screwdriver to comfortably get back there and remove those two screws that are all the way in the back. So let's get started with pulling uh, more of this apart. Be very careful when you're pulling them out. You don't want it falling into that blower thing down there so that would be no fun and i know you're looking at my back right Still gonna remove uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and that one. And then it all should come out. Alright, I'm gonna 
myself a small little pryer here. Time to go out to the garage to get a real pry tool. Okay. Same thing over here. Alright. Carefully want to take these out. You can see those are our ignition rods. And they're Yes, I am not a plumber. I'm a homeowner. Right. Try to save some money on everyone here. So if you're not comfortable with doing this kind of stuff, of course don't do it. Alright, once I got my step stool, I got it working again. We got it. It's kind of not a lot to hold, but kind of wiggle it up and down as well as pull toward you. Get this guy out. Excellent. And now, uh, we can go get some compressed air and blow out this whole unit. All right, so we're in my garage. You can see, those are the igniter rod things. They're not too bad, not too dirty. We're going to take something that's not abrasive and we're just going to clean them off a bit. So I read you shouldn't use sandpaper and stuff. So we're just going to use like a piece of rag or something that's clean and not abrasive and just wipe it down and see how that turns out. All right, I got myself my clean piece of rag here. You can see. Now we're just going to gently... Wipe these guys down a bit. And I'll go out and blow out the other stuff and then we're going to start putting it back together again. We got everything cleaned out, blowed out. Just a matter of putting everything back in the way it was.
go. That's the whole thing back together again. And at this point in time, you can turn your gas back on and plug it back in. And it should work. As it always did. Now it's ready again to produce hot water. All you gotta do is put the cover back on, those four flat screws, the side trim, and you're good to go. So I do this approximately about once a year because I live in a desert climate and it's rather dusty and disgusting around here. Um, you might not need to do this ever or once every five years, you know. So I hope this helps you guys uh, how to clean this all out, take everything out, and you can see how easy it is to get to these if you need to replace them, the igniters. Um, yeah, just hope you save some money and get yourself hot water again. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks.